Is it at this time that you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? So asked Jesus' disciples on this very mountain, the Mount of Olives. Now that the king had been raised, was it time for the city to be cleansed of its wickedness? Was it time for the oppressive rod of the nations to be shattered? Was it time for the Messiah's unending kingdom to be established on earth? The disciples were asking, is it time for the conquest to be completed? The divine answer was, it is not for you to know the times and seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will be my witnesses, beginning in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But the message would dawn in the holy city. For the king ascended and his spirit descended, empowering his people to proclaim the message of repentance and faith in Israel's Messiah echoed throughout the city. But Jerusalem rejected the message and persecuted the Lord's chosen people. After Stephen was stoned outside the city gates, the disciples were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. And as they were sown in these lands, the word of the good news continued to spread. But believers in the risen King are not citizens of this world. Thus, they were persecuted and put to death. In the midst of such trials, their mighty commander gave them words of comfort. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take courage. I have conquered the world. While the message of eternal life soared to the nations, the witnesses of Jesus were persecuted because of their allegiance to him. One of the king's chosen apostles, John, a witness to his ministry and resurrection, was scourged, mistreated, and exiled to an island called Patmos. As John was in the spirit on the Lord's day, the beloved disciple received a divine visitation.
Do not fear. I am the first and the last, the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, that which you have seen, and the things which are, and what is to come hereafter. So the Apostle John picked up the pen and recorded the visions of the coming fiery destruction of the day of the Lord. as well as the restoration and renewal that will occur in its wake. A gift from the Lord to his chosen people, a gift of insight and instruction, the book of Revelation. The king's message was sent forth and delivered to the seven churches in Asia Minor. And this message of prophecy and preparation has been preserved by the Spirit of the Living God. It is ours to hear the genuine and true call of the King to his people. We are reminded that these are the words of the one who holds the sharp two-edged sword. These seven churches of the first century were confronted with the seduction of disobedience, as well as the warnings and true promises for enduring in faithfulness. And though given to these historical churches in the first century, the words of the King of Kings have been preserved and presented before us today to both hear and heed. For Jesus commands, after every exhortation to these churches, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The call of the King to each of these churches that echoes to all of his people in every era is this, to conquer. But in what way? Not through picking up physical swords. We conquer through a different way, a divine way. We who are caught in this massive battle of all human history, conquer our ancient enemy, the serpent, through trusting the work of the king and enduring in patient faithfulness, awaiting his return. For it is witnessed of our victory. They conquered him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives, even unto death. The heirs of the promises, scattered across history and throughout the earth, have been suffering 
as foreigners, exiles in this world, and will do so until their king returns. The pilgrims and sojourners in this world are looking for a better country and a lasting city. One of the Messiah's promises is to the one who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna and I will give him a white stone with a new name written on the stone that no one knows except the one who receives it. Manna was the heavenly nourishment provided after the Exodus with a portion hidden in the Ark of the Covenant. Jesus extends the sure hope of heavenly nourishment in his eternal presence. A white stone was an emblem that enabled the recipient to enter a realm of blessing and honor. This stone is the king's promise to lead us into his land and his city. But before the heirs of the kingdom will enter the promised land and inherit the coming city, there will be a reckoning. The Lord of all creation will visit the earth in judgment. The prophets foresaw this coming day, where neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them on the day of the wrath of the Lord. In the fire of his jealousy, all the earth shall be consumed, for a full and sudden end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. while the earth will be devastated by his fiery, unstoppable judgment. The Lord will once again stretch out his sovereign hand. To bring about life, renewal, and restoration. that in abundance. Israel will be planted in her land, never to be uprooted again. After they have looked upon the one they have pierced, and the land that was desolate shall be tilled, instead of being the desolation that it was in the sight of all who passed by. Nations will flow to its light, and they will say, this land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden. The wolf will lie down with the lamb, and there will be shalom. Waters will flow from the throne of the king, forming a river that descends to the east. And on the banks, on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail, but they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water for them flows from the sanctuary.
Their fruit will be for food and leaves for healing. This river will continue to flow eastward, where it will enter a sea long dead. And when this living stream reaches the salt sea, its waters will become fresh and teem with life. The power and glory of the God of Israel will be on full display before all the nations. Every kind of living creature that swarms will live wherever the river flows, and there will be a huge number of fish because this water goes there. Since the water will become fresh, there will be life everywhere the river goes. And for the resurrected, we will enter our eternal abode. The holy city, our city. The city of the great king. No death, disease, or corruption will ever again plague those who are raised by Jerusalem's King. And the Lord extends His sure promise. The one who conquers will inherit these things, and I will be His God, and He will be my Son. So we wait. We endure. We trust our King to fight for us and fulfill His word. And in doing so, we conquer. <laughs>